Hey guys, Chris Gamble here. Uh, well, let's see. Let's see if I can do this. So, <laughs> this is me. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm filming myself, filming myself. Yes, I know that's stupid. But, uh, the reason I'm doing it is because I, um, I want to show you my XSplit setup. So that's the main thing. So this over here is actually the XSplit broadcaster. I'm not sure if you can see that. So I am just using a camera to film everything else here. Uh, but what you can see is I'm switching through these different settings here. Now these can all be hot keyed and stuff like that as well. But basically I have a whole bunch of different setups here. Uh, we see I have my bench arm. I call that bench arm, bench magnet, middle screen. That's just the capture here. And then finally microscope, because I actually do have a microscope, and that's down here. So my setup is basically I can talk to the camera here. I can also uh, capture uh, the screen while I'm doing KiCad or anything like that. The whole time I'm actually using a lapel mic that's plugged directly in. And, uh, well, I, I monitor over here while using the, cam uh, the camera and the screen over here. Now another thing I wanted to point out is this is another, another thing that helped me. is the It's called the, the camera... It's just called camera settings. It's like JavaScript based. Where is it? Camera settings. It's just a, it's a sorry. It's Java based. It's a Java based tool. I just like barely found it online. The thing that's amazing about this is it allows you to manually control just about every aspect of the camera. In fact, some things that are even creepy, uh, like let's see, where is it? LED. Yeah. So this is the LED here. I can just I can just turn this down. Yep. Nice timer. Um, so I can just turn off the LED. This is thing still recording, but I can just turn it down. Just turn it up and down like that. It's nuts. Anyways, you basically have control over all bits of internal firmware there, which is amazing. So that's how I control the cameras and do focus and stuff like that. I do manual focus as well uh, because sometimes you just need to. I don't. I don't like the autofocus on a lot of these things as well. So if you see, you have to go to the mechanical tab. But then if you see on here the magnet thing, it's pretty close. See if I can get that in focus. Got the wrong camera. So you see, I can I can just pull it in and out of focus really easily here, and um, and that's important for when you're doing close-ups. I mean, these C920s that I use. So I use a C920. It's a Logitech camera. It's about I think like seventy or eighty dollars, but it's a really nice camera. It does 1080p. Has a nice lens on it. It can even do macro really well. Uh, but then. In addition to that, I also recently switched to using this microscope, this USB and HDMI out microscope. Uh, I actually do a capture card for this thing, so I do an HDMI capture, but it's really just looking at the, the low level stuff here. So if you want to see the microscope, I just switch to that camera. I could have hit Control 6 as well. And oh, the settings around there. Um, and then when I come over to the bench, you see that I have, you can even like pre mouse over and preview what you're going to next. And then I just have simple stuff here. This is actually just another another uh, camera I had. I put a, a a magnet on here, and then I'm able to use just a simple. Uh, well, I can really use anything magnetic. And then I also have a flying camera arm. This is a Manfrotto arm. So basically, between these two things, I have two camera views on the desk, right? And it's not a it's not a big desk. I had decent lighting up there. That's a that's like studio lighting. Um, pretty. It's much closer. Oops. It's much closer than I used to have on my old bench. I have this view. I have a I have a, a main camera view here, and uh, and then I can capture the screen. Basically, this is everything I need. So this is this is my camera setup, and I just wanted to call out XSplit because it's really fantastic. What it's doing here is it's is basically obviously you're watching a camera that's not using that, but when I am recording live, all I do is I I record directly to. Um, to disk, and this is live. This is live uh, encoding MP4, right? So it's actually doing 30 frames at a time. Well, yeah, 30 frames at a time at 10, 1020 by 10, 1920 by 1080 p right so doing some pretty heavy duty compression and then saving there and you know it can capture audio it can capture audio from the screen if I was watching a video or something like that too so all, all in all it's a pretty fantastic uh, pretty fantastic way of doing things so uh, yeah it's uh, <laughs> it's weird to film a camera setup but I uh, just wanted to show what that looks like if you have any questions please let me know down below uh, I it took me a long time to figure out how to get this all working properly. But now that I have, um, I really like it. Oh, and one other thing here. Sorry, I have a, a wireless set of lights as well, which is gonna look really bright here. But I, oh, yeah, what am I looking at here? So I'm filming, yes, I'm filming that, and then you, you see I'm also filming. But anyways, it, uh, that also helps to, to do the backlighting and just have a drop curtain behind me. Uh, so 
that's just nice for lighting up my face while I'm doing just talking to the camera kind of stuff. And then I can turn it off when I'm, you know, if I'm doing a long KiCad thing, I can turn it off and turn it back on. Oh, and the last final piece, sorry. <laughs> the, uh, the probably the most important thing here is that I can pause recording. And that's important because something like if I'm, say I'm on the bench here, right, and something's out of focus, right, so we're out of focus, I switch to a camera, I move something around, it's out of focus, I can literally pause it, well, it's already paused here, but I can pause it, I can adjust the focus to wherever I want it to be, and I can start it back up, and, well, let's try to turn it off now, uh, but I can start it back up, and that basically snaps to, it looks like a jump cut, so all of these things, and then, you know, going between scenes, it, uh, you know, it does nice fades and transitions and stuff like that, too. So my hand's starting to get shaky. I'm going to cut it off here. But uh, if you have any questions, let me know down, down in the comments below. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you check out XSplit. Uh, open broadcasting standard, open broadcasting software, OBS, is another great open source option. But unfortunately, you don't have a pause button. So that's the main problem there. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.